Thank you, Patrick. Thank you everyone for joining this webinar on creating user interfaces on MCUs. As Patrick mentioned during the webinar, if you have questions, please feel free to ask in the Q&A and uh, we will take the questions uh, after the presentation is over. So let's get started. Uh, this talk is a high level talk on Qt for MCUs. Uh, we are going to talk about evolution of displays so how hardware has changed and how displays have changed. Uh, then we are going to quickly uh, have a look into Qt Quick Ultralight, talk about the value proposition, the coverage on different microcontrollers, the licensing of Qt for MCUs, roadmap, and more info. If you look around you, displays are evolving, and so is the user experience. Displays that used to have seven segment LCDs or simple LCD panels have turned into colorful LCDs that mimic or seem more similar to a smartphone. And when you see such sort of user interfaces, the user experience that you expect out of that is something that you that is smooth and something that is very familiar to how you use your daily smartphone. And these sort of user interfaces are all around, popping all around. Uh, in, at home in, in, a, in a thermostat, on your coffee machine, uh, on your speaker phone, uh, on your smartphone, uh, smart variable. So it's, it's, a, it's a very, uh, it seems that uh, graphical user interfaces are replacing traditional mechanical buttons even and traditional displays. So if you're looking at the embedded hardware perspective, there are certain requirements that embedded hardware have, uh, especially for these uh, devices. So one couple of things are real-time processing. So a lot of these, a lot of events that happen, for example, on your thermostat or on your, um, on your uh, microwave oven or something similar, you need to have real-time processing over there that, uh, that the information is shown uh, at real time. Then on top of that, you have to have low power cons consumption. Uh, for example, on smart variables or smart watches, uh, battery operated devices, power consumption is, a, is, a, is an important criteria. Um, but not just in battery operated devices. Uh, in a lot of other household devices, um, there is something called energy rating that rates how much power these devices consume. So it's important to even keep uh, power consumption low on those devices, even if they are connected to the mains, to have a lower power rating. Of course, if you are using a, a device and you expect instant boot time, I mean, it's, it's uh, rather not reasonable to, for you to wait when you start a device that you have to wait up to one minute or two minutes for a display to pop up. Just imagine if you're using your oven and if you have to wait a minute or two before something is shown on, on the display, that's rather irritating. And at the end of the day, the device manufacturers have to always look at reducing the total bill of material because otherwise the device that they end up manufacturing is quite expensive. So the end, end sales price would also end up being reflecting that. So all of these uh, things are uh, important criteria when, when selecting an embedded hardware. And that's one of the reasons why 32-bit uh, microcontrollers with 2D graphics accelerators are becoming quite popular these days. Um, there are a lot of uh, microcontroller vendors that have launched in recent times a, diff a, a new range of these microcontrollers. So some of the ones that we are mentioning over here are NXP, ST, Renesas, and Cypress. Cypress has now been acquired by Infineon, so that's Cypress Infineon. And all of these vendors, they provide 32-bit microcontrollers that cover a wide range of use cases from smart variables to smart to consumer devices to industrial uh, devices as well as in automotive scenarios so let's take a look at what qquick ultralight can do in this uh, market of 32 bit microcontrollers first let's look into qquick ultralight which is a, basically what we uh, say as qml for resource constrained devices if you're familiar with Qt and Qt Quick, which is on the right-hand side of this slide, 
you see that if you write an application, you would write your application, the user interface in Qt Quick, and then you would use um, yeah, Qt APIs for the backend implementation. In the case of Qt Quick Ultralight, you again use QML for the UI part, but instead of Qt APIs, you use standard C++. Why so? Let's have a look. When a Qt Quick Ultralight application is compiled as a pre-compilation step, the QML part is converted into C++. And then if we compare between the two, uh, a Qt Quick application uh, is, is compiled with Qt libraries and it uses JavaScript engine. On the other hand, Qt Quick Ultralight does not use JavaScript engine. It basically compiles itself to native code. And it can run either on top of an RTOS, like free RTOS, or you can also run it directly on bare metal without any operating system. Whereas on Qt Quick side, there's always a need for an operating system like embedded Linux uh, for a device or for VxWorks or integrity or QNX. And if you're using on desktop, of course, then it's Windows, Mac, or Linux. Let's look at an application block diagram of a Qt Quick Ultralight application. So the GUI application is built under a view model controller architecture where the view part is, the, the, uh, is developed in Qt Quick Ultralight, which is basically a subset of Qt Quick. So you're developing the view or the UI part in QML, and the backend part, which is the model and controller, would be implemented in C++. That then uses the graphics runtime, which in turn calls the 2D graphics accelerator for each of the MCUs. So each MCU platform provides their own uh, graphics accelerator, and this is the graphics runtime where it calls those APIs. Of course, you could also optionally use an ATO, such as free ATOS, if you want to do some sort of task scheduling or task handling, but it's not mandatory. mandatory. In case you do not have a 32 bit microcontroller, let's say you are developing on your development machine, then you can also run this application, Qt Quick Ultralight application directly on your host machine. And for this, we use, in the backend, we use Qt GUI to, uh, to uh, render the Qt Quick Ultralight application. If you have a 30-bit microcontroller, then we are using the 2D accelerators provided by each microcontroller vendor. So for example, for NXP, we're using PXP or VGLite. For Infineon Cypress, we are using Blit Engine or Draw Engine. For Renaissance, we are using Renaissance's 2D drawing engine. For SD, we use Chrome Art. And in case there is no graphics accelerator, then we are rendering directly from CPU. For example, on the Xilinx Ultra Scale Plus. If you're interested to know more about how to build an application with Qt for MCUs on top of free atos. There's a presentation right after mine um, that is done by my colleague Bartosz. I would recommend you to uh, attend that. And later, Devinder, another colleague of mine, will be going through Qt for MCUs. And that will be a deep dive on the technical side. And that's later in the day. So let's take a look at what sort of application or what sort of graphic performance you can expect from a 32-bit microcontroller using Qt for MCUs. As I mentioned earlier, Qt for MCUs, we use the Chrome Art Accelerator when it comes to SD. So over here, we are showing a demo, uh, a thermostat demo running on an SDM32 F769i discovery board. On the right-hand side is a block diagram of the discovery board. There you see that uh, on the, for the graphics part, SD provides Chrome Art Accelerator, JPEG Codec Acceleration, and Art Accelerator. And Keep Quick Ultralight is basically using these accelerators. Let's have a look at how the demo looks like. So demo is, this demo, or uh, the graphics over here, the display is 800, uh, 800 times 480. And it's a 32-bit color um, with 32-bit color depth. 
This demo basically shows different sorts of UI controls, such as buttons, dials. Uh, here is a flickable and The graphics performance that we uh, get out of this device is 60 frames per second. The good part about having Qt for MCU on top of SD microcontroller is that it, it plays really well with another device that SD recently introduced in the market, which is the SDM32 MP1, which is one with their first microprocessor. So with Qt, or Qt Quick, you can target both the microcontroller and the microprocessor families from SD. The next demo that we are going to show is the uh, demo that running on the NXP i.MX RT series, specifically the RT 1170. On the right hand side, you can see the block diagram of the 1170. The 1170 has two graphics accelerators. The first one is a 2D GPU with vector graphics acceleration. And the other is a 2D graphics acceleration called PXP that provides functionalities like resizing, overlay, and rotation. Let's take a look at the graphics performance on this device. Over here, we are showing a motorcycle instrument cluster. So something that you would expect on an e-bike or a motorcycle. So it has got a tachometer. Uh, it shows uh, the speedometer and of course the different gears. What's also interesting is if you look closely at the fuel uh, gauge, the liquid in the fuel gauge is also, there's animation on that. And as you can see, there are multiple animations running at the same time, yet the performance, graphical performance is very, very good. Something which is possible because of the 2D accelerators that are provided on this device. So NXP has been a very close partner for us and uh, Qt for, in general, Qt or standard Qt, is used uh, on all of the i.MX series, uh, which are predominantly microprocessors. So this is the first um, microcontroller, or this series of microcontrollers that NXP introduced. They mentioned it as crossover, micro crossover processors because it bridges the gap between microprocessors and low-end microcontrollers. These are all Cortex-M cores. So over here on this, on this device, there are two Cortex cores, the Cortex-M7 and the M4. And there are other devices from NXP that only have Cortex M7. So it's, uh, there's a large range of devices that you can choose from. And the graphics performance in all of the i.MX RT series as with Qt for MCs is fairly, fairly good. The next demo that I would like to show is a Qt for MCU demo running on Renesas R8850. The R8850 provides a 2D graphics accelerator a JPEG and warping engine, plus a Sprite engine. For this demo, we created a hybrid instrument cluster. Uh, it's something that you might uh, see in a car. So uh, typically in a lot of cars uh, nowadays, they, you have mechanical gauges. And in between you have a small display that shows different car information. So over here, we have tried to create a demo for that. Here you can see the car information, you can uh, scroll or browse through different music um, albums and also shows ADAS functionality with lane assistance. In the graphical performance or the graphics performance on, on the RH850 that we expect is 60 FPS. So fairly good graphics performance on, on, on this microcontroller too. Now that we had a brief look at Qt Quick Ultralight, let's look at the value prop. So if you're familiar with Qt Quick, you know that Qt Quick already provides uh, Qt Quick controls. And in Qt for MCUs also, you know, we have Qt Quick Ultralight controls that provide a similar mobile-like user experience. So it's a rich library of UI controls that you can use in order to create your application readily. The other part about uh, Qt Quick Ultralight is that it re really nicely plays with standard Qt. So it's possible to have your QML application also running on microprocessors or high-end devices. So you can reuse the UI front end and you can extend the backend logic with Qt C++ APIs. 
If you recall, on here for MCUs, the backend is written in standard C++. And if you want to, let's say, port uh, to a higher end, high end operating system or a more powerful device, you can add your APIs. So that plays very well with, uh, with uh, your Qt Quick Control Light application. If you're looking uh, at uh, examples of how to make this possible, uh, there is a colleague of mine, Sumer Baines from Verolt Engineering, who is providing, who is going to conduct a talk called Unified Architecture, where he talks about how they have created their application, a cute quick application, targeting mobile devices, embedded devices, and microcontrollers. And that's later during the day. Another thing with Qt for MCs is because it is QML based, it, you basically can use existing Qt tools. So what we call collaborative product development. You can use the Qt design studio to design your UI interface and different user screens. And then you can develop further with Qt Creator and then deploy directly on the device. So that place, so you're with familiarity with existing Qt tools and, and reuse of Qt existing tools helps with the speed of product development. So in, it, the, the biggest advantage that I see personally is that uh, one does not need to learn another UI toolkit or another UI technology in order to target um, yeah, microcontrollers or graphics for microcontrollers. So if I sum up, uh, why use Qt? So for existing users, it's a lot of a reuse of the existing skill set. So if they're familiar with Qt Quick and QML, they can easily create applications for microcontrollers. You don't need to learn a new technology. And plus you can target a really low foot memory footprint because of, the way that, uh, because of the way that Qt Quick Ultralight has been designed. For new users, uh, the advantage is that Qt, Q, Qt Quick now um, covers from 32-bit microcontrollers to really high-end devices. So it's, it's a large, uh, it basically provides some sort of scalability. So you can cover, um, if you're, if you're um, developing for multiple product lines, you can basically use the same technology across different product lines. And the advantage of QML is that it, it provides, uh, the UI is scalable, so it provides, it has flexible layout mechanism and it can adapt to different screen sizes and aspect ratios. Let's have a look at uh, which are the microcontrollers that are covered with Qt for MCUs. We start with ST. So uh, ST provides or has categorized the microcontrollers into four different categories, high performance, mainstream, ultra low power, and wireless. Among these microcontrollers, the ones that have a 2D graphics accelerator are the STM32H7, the STM32F7, and the STM32F4 in the high performance. And the ultra low power is the STM32 L4 plus. All of these microcontroller families are supported by Qt for MCUs. If we look at NXP, NXP i.mx RT series, then we are talking about the RT 1170, the 1064, 1060, and 1050. These are the four devices that have a graphics accelerator, and all of these devices are supported by Qt for MCUs. The Renaissance recently introduced the Renaissance RA product family, where the RA6 and the RA8 are geared towards high performance HMI. And both of these are, will be supported by Qt for MCUs. Renaissance also has um, or provides microcontrollers in the automotive space, specifically the RH850. And Qt for MCUs supports the RH850 D1M series. If you talk about Cypress and Infineon, they are uh, launching um, Cypress Travio 2, which is also supported by Qt for MCUs. If you're looking to, if, or if you already have one of the development boards, or if you want to check out some of the demos, you can download the demos. We have different demos that are, you can download from our website. I've put the links on the top right corner over here. And you can download those demos on your device and flash them and then check out the performance. So there are demos uh, from non-automotive, so thermostats, smart variable, coffee machine, kitchen appliance, and industrial. 
as well as automotive demos like automotive instrument cluster, hybrid cluster demo, which I showed you earlier, and the motorcycle cluster demo. Let's look at licensing. So Qt for m series is available under um, the developed licenses. We have packaged them into three different packages. The first one is a starter license, which you can, which you get when you um, request for an evaluation. This consists of development tools, design tools, pre-compiled binaries for all supported platforms. So for all the MCUs that I mentioned earlier, and the host development or the host platform that we support is Windows. Once you have the starter package, and then if you want to develop on a particular vendor platform, then you can purchase the essential license, which basically provides you source code, as well as a standard support in addition to the starter package. And if you're planning to target automotive microcontrollers, or if you're target, planning to target multiple vendor platforms, then, you, then the ultimate package might be the one that you want to buy. In addition to whatever is included in Essential, and you can get source code of any vendor platform, uh, plus uh, we include support for safety certified RTOS and graphics monitoring. Apart from commercial licenses, there are other licenses that you can, uh, that you can get Qt for MCUs, for example, Qt for small business or Qt for educational programs. If you're interested in those, uh, you'll find details on our website. We also have the Qt for MCUs partnership program where we provide Qt for MCUs license for non-commercial use. So if you're planning to, for example, uh, do some sort of evaluation or if you're planning to learn more about uh, Qt for MCUs, uh, and use it as a non-commercial project, please reach out to us and we'll be happy to um, cooperate and partner with you. Yeah, next up is the roadmap. The first version of Qt for MCUs was released in December of last year, where we enabled the best in cl class graphics performance on Renaissance ST and NXV microcontrollers. Internationalization and support for multiple languages was already supported in 1.0, and we had support for bare metal, so without any RTOS. Release 1.1, which was uh, done a couple of weeks ago in April, introduced the, the first or brought the first tech review of the free RTOS support on microcontrollers with Qt for MCUs. We also introduced a way where you can split your asset and program data across different types of memories so that you can create complex HMI applications and that you do not need to load your complete application uh, directly into the memory, but you can keep uh, some of the things like images on, on Flash. We also sub introduce support for compressed PNGs, so you can um, save on memory footprint or you can reduce the application size, and this compressed PNG would then be decompressed at runtime. In addition to these features, we also uh, improved or ported Qt for MCUs on different microcontrollers such as the NXP RT1170 and the STM3287 series. The next release is planned for June, and that will be the release 1.2, where, as I mentioned, the 1.1 was a tech preview of free RTOS, so the full support of free RTOS will be with 1.2. We're also uh, going to have a tech preview of Monotype. So Monotype is a company that provides um, support for fonts. They have a, a very good font rendering engine and we will be providing tech, we'll be integrating that with Qt for MCUs and providing a tech preview with that release. On the tooling side, Qt Design Studio, uh, with Qt Design Studio 1.5, there's already possibility to create a UI with, uh, for Qt Quick Ultralight or Qt for MCUs. And this will, get, uh, this will become better with uh, 1.2 release. We are also introducing something called platform abstraction so that our users can easily port Qt for MCUs or do the adaptation for their own custom hardware. The adaptations that we provide are for development boards. And in most cases, it might be that, uh, that your board that you use on the microcontroller might slightly differ, differ from the development boards. So there might be some sort of adaptation that needs to be done. And with the platform abstraction, that process would be much simpler. In addition to that, we are going to support more MCUs such as the RT1060, and I mentioned the Cypress Tra V2 and the Renesas RA6. 
For future releases, uh, based on market requests, we can add more hardware, more autos, and more compilers. So this is something that we actively are working with our lead customers to understand their requirements and then drive our product roadmap based on those requirements. We are also looking at integrating Qt for MCUs and third-party SDKs and IDEs. Already in, as, as part of Qt Creator, you already have integration done in Qt Creator. And this uh, development is, is ongoing. So if you if you're looking at how to integrate with Qt Creator, here's the link that you can go on the online documentation and see how, how it works with existing Qt Creator. We're also targeting other use cases such as video, audio, and functional safety. All right, let's get into more info. If you're looking for more info on Qt for MCUs, uh, we have different videos. We have from last year, we have this uh, two different talks on at the Qt World Summit. Uh, there, is an, uh, there is a webinar on porting existing Qt Quick application to microcontrollers and other webinars with NXV and ST. And if, you're wanting, if you want to look into the documentation, then the online documentation is also available. So the links are provided over here. Once you have the slide deck, you can uh, directly uh, click on those links to uh, check out these resources. If you want to try out Qt for MCUs, you can go to qt.io slash download, uh, go to download Qt now, or to Qt for MCUs landing page, which is qt.io slash qt minus for uh, hyphen MCUs, and uh, click on the button, try Qt for MCUs. You need to fill up a small short form, um, and then uh, yeah, you get access to the evaluation version of And as I mentioned, there are other MCU talks at Virtual DeckCon. Uh, one talk on, on the free Atlas talk is right after my talk. At, and then uh, during the day, there are two other talks that you, I recommend that you should also attend. With that, I come to the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening. Let's get to the question and answer. We have a minute, so I'll be quick on this. It looks like Qt Quick Ultralight isn't available under the GPL. Does it mean it's only available as a commercial license? That's correct. Are 3D graphics supported such as Qt Quick 3D? Um, unfortunately, 3D graphics uh, are not supported. And the reason for that is not a limitation on Qt Quick uh, Ultralight, but rather what uh, the 32-bit microcontrollers can support. So at the moment, the 32-bit microcontrollers, they provide only 2D graphics accelerators and not 3D graphics accelerator. So that's the reason why 3D graphics would not be support or is not supported. So it's a hardware limitation. Which range do I move in regarding RAM and code size using Qt for MCUs? What's the recommend minimum for a RAM and flash? Um, we have used uh, Qt for MCUs on the lowest that we have used is Cortex M4. Um, which is the STM32L4R9i. Um, so I would say, I mean, in terms of a basic Qt Quick application, or Qt Quick Ultralight application runs uh, below 100 kilobytes. So that's that's fairly low, but it really depends on the application that you are developing and what, how much of, uh, yeah, whether it's a complex application or not. And I guess the RAM size would uh, would depend typically on the type of application and the usage. So, um, but we can provide that information uh, later on, on the minimum memory requirements. How does deployment work during development uh, and debugging? Is there some JTAG integration in Qt Creator or something similar? Uh, we are using, um, yes, uh, in a way, yeah. Uh, we are using a different probes, so you can use uh, the OpenST probe or ST Link probe, or you can use Sega probe, etc. So typically, we use uh, utilize those applications to uh, deploy on the device. Qt for small business license includes a MCU starter license. Um, not at the moment, but yes, uh, there's a plan that we would include that. URL for free version download of Qt for MCUs. Um, there is no free version. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a commercial license. So for evaluation, you can go to the Qt for MCU um, landing page. Can I use 64-bit Windows IoT and IoT as development environment to play with Qt for MCU's application? 
Um, I'm not sure. I need to check. Which compilers are supported so far regarding NXPI.MX series? Um, we are starting uh, right now. We support GCC. Uh, plan is to support in the future IAR compiler and Kyle compiler. For the Renesas RHA50, we support GHS, so uh, Green Hills compiler. Do you have plans to integrate in VS Code? Um, yes. Um, as I mentioned, we plan to integrate in third party IDEs. Uh, we still need to put that on our roadmap when exactly it will be integrated into VS Code. How is the QML UI manipulated from C? Are the signal slots and property binding concepts? Yes. So it's similar to what you expect in Qt Quick. Is uh, Qt for MCU supported for development on Linux machines? Mm, not at the moment. We, we provide only on Windows, although, uh, in principle, you could also use Linux because most of our developers who are developing Qt for MCUs are also developing on Linux machines. Right, I think we are over the hour. Um, I hope I've answered most of the questions. If there are any further questions, then uh, please uh, send us through our contact us form. And uh, yeah, I'll be happy to answer those questions. Over to you, Patrick.